So a majority of things that we do in life require a little bit of planning and preparation. If a person wants a job, they have to prepare for the interview by learning about the company, uh, maybe getting a new suit, shining their shoes a little bit. Um, if a, a teacher, um, they have to prepare for the fall semester by putting together a curriculum during the summer. And then becoming a priest, that takes about four to eight years in seminary, planning for ordination through prayer, study, and discernment. Well, all of this planning and preparation, it involves change. We have to develop new skills, gain new knowledge, and to a certain degree, we go from who we were to someone new. Well, this past Lenten season, we all made plans and preparations to grow closer to Christ through prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. And whether we're aware of it or not, these, uh, these spiritual practices and mortification, they caused a change. They may have liberated us a little bit from our old ways of thinking. They may have helped us to let go of some of the attachments or remove some of the obstacles that kept us from giving ourselves fully to God. To a certain degree, we went from who we were at the start of Lent to someone new today. Change takes place in the Israelites in our first reading as well. So they'd been enslaved to the Egyptians for 400 years. And if you think about that, that's a really long time. That's like generation upon generation. And so for some, their identity was tied up in this enslavement. But then came the night of Passover. The angel of death, he passed through Egypt, and he only spared those who had the blood of the lamb marked on their doorpost. And it's through the Passover that the Israelites were liberated from their enslavement. And after passing through the Red Sea, God eventually establishes them as their own nation. They're no longer identified as slaves in Egypt, but they have their own identity now. They're a new people of God. Which brings us to Holy Thursday. There's a new Passover taking place on Holy Thursday night. Similar to the Israelites being liberated from their slavery in Egypt, this new Passover, it liberates mankind from sin and death. And after we pass through those waters of baptism, each of us are changed and recreated. We're no longer enslaved to sin, but we become children and a holy people of God. Now, Holy Thursday, it's significant in a number of ways. If you look at scripture, it was a very busy day in the life of our Lord. And while all of his actions in scripture are important for us, uh, the church highlights two in particular for us tonight. It's the washing of the feet and it's the Last Supper. So for obvious reasons, um, with COVID, we're not going to have the washing of the feet tonight, um, but it is a very important action in the life of the church. So before the Last Supper, we're told that the Lord poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with a towel around his waist. To kind of put this into context, that would be like fatherhood coming to the rectory for dinner with Father Clark, Father Johnny, and I, and he brings with him a, uh, a pitcher of water and a bucket, and he starts to wash our feet. Now, me, personally, I probably wouldn't be as quick as Peter was in our gospel to stop fatherhood. I'd probably give him a bar of soap and a towel and say, <laughs> make sure they're nice and clean. <laughs> I'll hear it from him later. <laughs> But, but all joking aside, it would be a little weird if he started washing our feet, and uh, I'm sure the other priests would agree with me, we'd be a little bit surprised if he started to do that. And uh, we see that with the disciples. They're surprised when our Lord stoops down to wash their feet. They saw him as their master, and foot washing back then, it was a menial chore. It was reserved for slaves or servants. And so uh, Peter's response when our Lord gets to him makes sense. He says, you will never wash my feet. There's something more than just a simple foot washing taking place here. Otherwise, our Lord wouldn't have said, what I am doing, you do not understand now, but you will understand it later. Because I think, for the most part, people understand that foot washing, just kind of the typical gesture of foot washing, is just to wash dirt off your feet. So there's something else going on here. What Christ is doing is he's instituting the ministerial priesthood. 
And we can see that by looking at a few Old Testament references. So in the Old Testament, before Aaron and his sons are anointed, uh, their feet, or before they're anointed priest, their feet are washed. It's considered the ritual washing before consecration. And then when Jesus responds to Peter in our gospel saying, unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me or no part in me, He's reminding us, or it reminds us of the Old Testament priests who had a, uh, a portion or a part in God. God was their inheritance, and they were set apart for him. And Jesus is the disciples' uh, portion. He's their inheritance. And the disciples, they're going to share in his ministry. And in the context of Holy Thursday in our scripture reading, we see that it's a priestly ministry. At the Last Supper, when our Lord instituted the Eucharist, he said, do this in memory of me, meaning offer this Eucharistic sacrifice of the Last Supper in memory of me. And sacrifice throughout scripture and really history, it's always been a priestly function. The priest would offer it on behalf of the people. And so Holy Thursday night, through this combination of the foot washing and the Last Supper, our Lord has instituted the priesthood and the Eucharist. And it's because of this, every time the priest carries out that command of the Lord to do this in memory of me, our Lord is made present wherever we celebrate Mass. Now, the Eucharist and priesthood, if you think about it, they're really acts of love on the part of God. They're given for our sanctification so that we can be transformed and participate in his life. And in light of this, with kind of this in mind, perhaps the challenge for us today is to allow, to allow ourselves to be changed by the mystery of the Eucharist. It's in the Eucharist that we find our spiritual food that sustains us and nourishes us here on earth, but we also find a model of who we're meant to become. The body and blood of our Lord in the Eucharist, it symbolizes Christ giving his whole self for our sakes. He holds nothing back, and we're called to do the same, to be transformed by this sacrament and, like our Lord, give our entire selves as a gift to God and in service to others.